Um, but I did want to take a minute now, um, and I wanted to talk about you know bias in data modeling and in the STEM field. Um, and I, I wanted to start you know with that um, that thing that we started with, where we showed that image of you converted from a woman to a man when we asked uh, Midjourney to show to take this photograph and turn it into a data scientist. And I just wanted, to, I was actually really shocked by that, but maybe not surprised. And I just wanted you to reflect on um, what is it like to be, a, you know, a woman in a male dominated field? Yeah, so I would say, you know, it's no secret that minorities are underrepresented um, both in my field and you can see at, uh, with the mid journey uh, example and in the data science sorry, the data sets that are actually used to create these models. Um, I've seen this from personal experience, you know, throughout my career, um, you see it in the documented issues of facial recognition software, um, Midjourney as one example, but also, you know, in more uh, risky situations where the facial recognition software is being used by police or airport security, um, these are all very known issues and it is, it's definitely concerning, right? And I think a good example also is just, we, you see it in resume screening tools as well. Uh, Amazon is an example. They just continued using one of these algorithms because they had learned that um, the model was penalizing resumes that actually contain the word woman. And this was really just a result of a biased training set where you know most of the company's management positions were male. And the model can only know as much as it's trained, right? as much as you show it. So if, if you show it a, train, a biased training data set, then that is what it's going to learn. And that's what it's going to pick up on. And it's going to perpetuate you know, the issues that we already see in the field today. Um, and some, you know, some less obvious examples are, again, with the resume screening tools, you can try to, you know, control for that. So I think like the woman, finding the, uh, the term woman, that's an obvious example, right? But then there's also some more hidden examples where the algorithms uh, were learning to look for specific vocabulary, like um, you know, it was executed, the word executed was uh, was a good word on a resume, but that also happened to be a word that was predominantly only used by males, but that's not necessarily something you would, you know, connect the dots on, on paper, right? You wouldn't, um, you may not actually realize that that's an issue, but if you rely on these algorithms to learn the patterns based off of the biased data set, then these kind of scenarios will arise and, um, and without having a human in the loop, someone else, you know, trying to review and screen that you might end up with an extremely biased uh, pool of candidates because of because you started out with that biased data training set. And, you know, as the father of a daughter, I know that um, the STEM field tends to be kind of underrepresented. Um, I'm just curious, like the lived experience of, of being in, a f in the field, ha are, 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 do you often find yourself, um, you know, alone in the room? Uh, like, how, how does that work? Uh, just, just, just emotionally and, and logistically for you? Yeah, um, I would say again, throughout my career, you know, I've been in a diverse, uh, different industries, but throughout my entire career, I've almost always been, you know, the only female in a room, um, in most of my meetings, that's just kind of what I've become accustomed to and you know obviously it's not my favorite <laughs> but I think that all we can do is try to you know be aware of that and just to try to encourage leaders and individuals to be open to uh, having more diversity you know it's it's definitely it's definitely something that is still lacking in the STEM field, and uh, and again, you can see it. At, you can see it. The you can see the symptoms of it coming out in models as well as you know just my day to day, right? Yeah, you know, 
Um, Ariel Biscayart said sometimes being in a male dominated area is great. Um, I think one of the risks when you don't have all the voices represented is, you know, there's there's two aspects to creating AI, and I'm going to actually talk about this um, in a bit, but there's the creation of the AI brain and then the training of that brain. And, you know, th th there's a lot of challenges around making the brain, you know, that original model that's trained on massive amounts of data less biased. And we see this in the most extreme way with facial recognition, where it just is not good at recognizing dark skinned faces. Um, and so, you know, really what Annie, I think when we were preparing for this was talking about is making that original brain uh, a better reflection of the actual society rather than having to kind of train out the biases after the fact. Um, and, and that's a really vibrant, difficult, challenging conversation in AI right now because it's so expensive to make the brain and you can only make brains so often. And then there's the implementation of it where you're watching out for emergent properties and training it with the thumbs up, thumbs down and reinforcing uh, good things and eliminating bad ones. But it's game. It's a game of whack-a-mole. Uh, whereas if you can get it right from the start, such, such as right is, um, it, it can actually solve for a lot of the biggest fears and risks, uh, perhaps, uh, from AI amongst researchers. So um, I'd love for you to just reflect on that aspect, which is the conversation that's happened inside of the field about how to create a brain that is more reflective of our society rather than certain elements of our society. Yeah, I think that, you know, it all comes back to starting out with having a diverse and representative training data set. You know, these models only know as much as we are telling them to learn, right? So they're only seeing what we show them. And, you know, I think it's important to remember humans are building these models, right? We decide, we're telling them what is right and what is wrong based off of the data that we feed them. And so it really starts with us kind of recognizing these unconscious biases and then, you know, putting in extra effort to make sure that what we're training them with is diverse and representative of our society. And, um, and again, just really, it comes back to having a human in the loop and having more diverse people also be part of this process so that we can help them help actively review and screen these models and notice these issues um, before, you know, before it's too late. And I think that it really, the more diverse the people who are involved in trying to build these models, the better we can kind of see and spot these issues and try to, uh, you know, try to address them before they are the force to it. Yeah. Well, you know, I, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for sharing. And, you know, I hope my daughter grows up to be just like you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. You're welcome.